Well, good morning, Grace Church. Hope you're all doing well. We've made our way into June, getting some warm weather, nice weather, uh, beautiful yesterday, beautiful today, uh, good to, to gather together this morning. Uh, perfect song. Uh, Jordan and I really hadn't talked about the coordinating the worship, worship and the message today, but uh, the sun coming up, shining into our lives, Jesus Christ uh, showing up and shining uh, uh, his light into our lives so that we can grow more and more into his image. You'll kind of see that as we go along. But a uh, beautiful day today uh, to be in the presence of the Son, Jesus Christ. A few things uh, before I get started. Uh, one, uh, let's pray for Michael Zazaro. I think Michael Zazaro was supposed to be up on the stage this morning with the praise team, but Jordan showed me pictures this morning. He's got two casts on his arms from a, a baseball collision or a baseball something that happened. And uh, is Michael in here today? And see the Zazaros, but uh, sounds like he fractured or broke both of his arms. I mean, he's a guitar player. He helps lead us in worship. So it'll be a while before we get to see uh, Michael up on stage again. So pray for, pray for him and a quick recovery. Also, if you haven't, hadn't already heard, uh, our sister Sandy uh, Jenkins got her promotion uh, to heaven this week. Uh, services will be, a visitation will be tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. and then a service will be at 11.30. Also pray for uh, Bud and Doug and Darren and other, other family members as they, uh, and us as well, as we uh, grieve the loss of, of Sandy. And also I wanna, wanna welcome John and Cheryl Trishman this morning. I saw them, I, I, maybe they're in the service, maybe they're still visiting out, are they? Okay, kind of back, back there. John and Cheryl were, John's going to be conducting uh, the Sandy's uh, funeral tomorrow uh, and here uh, with us today. Uh, John was senior pastor at Grace Church, I'd say 25 years ago, but does that sound about right? About 25 years ago here. So many of you will remember uh, John and Cheryl, grateful that they were able to be with us uh, here this morning. So make sure you say hello. All right, let's pray uh, before we get into the word this morning. Lord, uh, thank you for uh, the sun coming up this morning. It happens every day. We take it for granted. Uh, Lord, you give us uh, new life every day. Uh, Lord, may the sun coming up in the morning uh, be a great reminder for us uh, that your son, Jesus Christ, uh, rises in our lives every single day as well. He shines brightly in our lives. He wants to satisfy us uh, with his love, the abundant love that he has shown us by dying on the cross for our sins. Uh, God, would your uh, love show into our hearts today. Uh, Lord, we do pray for the Jenkins family. Uh, Lord, would you comfort them? Would you be with them? Uh, would you bring them peace uh, in the days ahead as they uh, miss uh, Sandy here on this earth, uh, but Lord, we're grateful for your salvation. We're grateful for the gift of eternal life and that she is uh, with you uh, now and, and for eternity. Uh, so be with their family in the days ahead. Lord, I pray for our time in the word. Uh, would you speak to us? Uh, would you, we want to hear your voice. Uh, we want to be transformed. We want to be uh, changed more and more into the image of Christ even today. Uh, so lead us uh, through uh, your word today, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, I think uh, most of us uh, don't like change. Uh, if you're like uh, me, you start out every day uh, getting out of bed uh, about at the same time. I'll use this as an example. It's not me, but I think it's most of us. You get out of the bed and you drink the same cup of coffee. I'm not a coffee drinker. I don't do that, but we kind of have this similar routine that we go through in the morning. We may uh, shop at the same grocery store, fill up our gas tank at the same gas station, uh, do the same hobbies, cheer for the same sports teams. Uh, lots of us like uh, sameness. Uh, the same, uh, sameness is predictable, it's familiar, it's comfortable. Uh, I think a lot of us like sameness. How many people would say you are a, a person of sameness? You like things to stay the same, not change? Okay, I do think that's probably most. But there are other really 
uh, strange people out there, a little bit different, that like, like things to change up. They like things to be uh, different uh, all the time. You're always looking for some different experience. You're always changing vehicles that you drive. Uh, you're changing the, uh, the color of the paint on your walls. Uh, you're changing uh, the wardrobe that you wear. You're changing your hair. Uh, you change what you order at restaurants all the time. You like things to be uh, different. That's, that's some of us. I, I, I say your because that's not me. I don't like to do things uh, different a lot of times. Uh, different is exciting. Uh, different is adventurous. Different is definitely not boring. How many people would say uh, you are a, like things to be different? You want to experience something different? Okay, a, little, a few less of us about kind of what I thought there'd be more change. People with a if you're, a, if you're a change person, if you like things different, the sermon's not for you because it's all about change. So you'll, you'll enjoy this. You'll like this. You like the change. Dan, Dan's out of here. Well, whether you like things to stay the same or whether you like to experience uh, something different uh, in your life, the reality is that life, this life that we go through, this life that we experience is, is all about change. Uh, you've probably heard the, the proverb from Ecclesiastic, the Ecclesiastes that says there is nothing new under the sun. I'm guessing that's, that's not how we feel in our daily experience. We feel like our, our days are often very uh, different and they're changing all the time. Every new day is unpredictable. Every day has its unknowns. Uh, some days, uh, some things change really, really quickly uh, in our lives. Some things change slowly over our uh, lifetime. Uh, some things happen by, some things change by choice, other changes happen unexpectedly. But I think all change is hard, it's difficult. It's not, not easy to go through uh, change in our lives. But no matter whether we, no matter how we think about change, uh, change is at the heart of what it means to be a believer in Christ. If there is one group of people uh, that should welcome and uh, receive and uh, be ready for change in life. It should be uh, the believer in Christ. There's two great changes that happen in the life of every believer. The first great change that happens in a believer's life is a change from sinner to saint. This change happens in an instant. When we hear the gospel, repent of our sin and place saving faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. We'd call this salvation. Salvation uh, changes God's thought about our sins from guilty to forgiven. Salvation changes our relationship with God uh, from enemy to an adopted child. Salvation changes us from deserving God's wrath and punishment uh, to receiving his grace and his mercy in our lives. And salvation changes our eternity uh, from hell to heaven bound. So there's the first great change that every believer uh, we'll go through and experience. The next great change that happens in the life of the believer is a change from carnality to Christ-likeness. This is a change that happens uh, slowly and progressively and is never fully complete in our lifetime. This, this change we would call sanctification. Sanctification uh, changes us from being selfish uh, to being a servant. Sanctification changes us from being cruel to being compassionate. Sanctification changes us from being arrogant to being humble, and sanctification changes us from being greedy to being generous. There's lots of changes that happen in our, in our lives as a result of the sanctification that God takes us through in life. The Christian life is about change. So there's two great changes that take place in the life of the believer, and I, I'd say there's three great, passage, three great change passages uh, that explain why and how we go through this uh, process of change throughout our lives. Romans 8, 28 and 29 says, and we know that for those who love God, all things work together for good, for those who are called according to his purpose. For those whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son. So this passage reveals that God uses all things in our lives to bring about Christ-likeness. God uses every circumstance in our lives, the good and the bad, all things uh, to produce the change that God wants to produce in our lives. 
Ephesians chapter 4, verses 11 through 13 says, And he gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the shepherds, and the teachers to equip the saints for the work of ministry, for building up the body of Christ, until we all attain to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to mature manhood, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. This passage reveals to us that the, the change in our lives is measured uh, by the person, person of Jesus Christ. Christ. God's not going to stop making changes in our lives until we fully matured, until we become an, a, a spiritual adult and we look just like Jesus Christ. And then 1 John chapter 2, verses 5 through 6 says, By this we know that we are in Christ. Whoever says he abides in him ought to walk in the same way in which he walked. This passage reveals that change, the change that occurs uh, manifests itself in how we live our daily lives. A perfect day, if we were to, to live out uh, exactly how God would have us live as a saved, sanctified human being, a perfect day would be living like Christ in all of our thoughts, all of our attitudes, all of our decisions, all of our words, and all of our actions. So all three of these passages have one thing in common. God is working in every moment and in every experience throughout our lives to change us into the image of Christ. If you're like me, you've got a, you've got a long way to go. There's a lot of change yet to happen in my life. There's a lot of change yet to happen in your life. So embracing change, what does that look like in our lives. We're going to look at 2 Corinthians chapters 3 and 4 this morning. I've got a long text to read, so if it helps you uh, listen along, follow along, I'd encourage you to open up to 2 Corinthians chapter 3. We're, we're primarily going to focus on chapter 4, but I want to read a couple paragraphs of chapter 3 uh, to give us a little bit of context. So I'll give you a couple seconds to turn over there, 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 3 and 4. I didn't mention it yet, but if, you're a, if you like to write down notes in your bulletin, there should be a, a sermon outline in there. So in just a minute, you'll be able to fill in the, the first blank on the outline. I'm going to start in verse 4 of chapter 3 in 2 Corinthians. Such is the confidence that we have through Christ toward God. Not that we are sufficient in ourselves to claim anything as coming from us, but our sufficiency is from God, who has made us sufficient to be ministers of a new covenant, not of the letter, but of the Spirit, for the letter kills, but the Spirit gives life. Now if the ministry of death, carved in letters on stone, came with such glory that the Israelites could not gaze at Moses' face because of its glory, which was being brought to an end, will not the ministry of the Spirit have even more glory? For if there was glory in the ministry of condemnation, the ministry of righteousness must far exceed it in glory. Indeed, in this case, what once had glory has come to have no glory at all because of the glory that surpasses it. For if what, we, what was being brought to an end came with glory, much more will what is permanent have glory. Since we have such hope, we are very bold, not like Moses who would put a veil over his face so that the Israelites might not, might not gaze at the outcome of what was being brought to an end, but their minds were hardened. For to this day, when they read the old covenant, the same veil remains unlifted, because only through Christ is it taken away. Yes, to this day, whenever Moses is read, a veil lies over their hearts, but when one turns to the Lord, the veil is removed. Now the Lord is spirit, and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And we all with unveiled face, beholding the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into the same image from one degree of glory to another. For this comes from the Lord, who is the Spirit. Therefore, having this ministry by the mercy of God, we do not lose heart, but we have renounced disgraceful, underhanded ways. We refuse to practice cunning or to tamper with God's word, but by the open statement of the truth, we would commend ourselves to everyone's conscience in the sight of God, and even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled, veiled to those who are perishing. In their case, the God of this world has blinded the minds of unbelievers to keep them from seeing the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. 
For what we can proclaim is not ourselves, but Jesus Christ as Lord, with ourselves as your servants for Jesus' sake. For God, who said, let light shine out of the darkness, has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. But we have this treasure in jars of clay to show that the surpassing power belongs to God and not to us. We are afflicted in every way, but not crushed, perplexed, but not driven to despair, persecuted, but not, but not forsaken, struck down, but not destroyed, always carrying in the body the death of Jesus, so that the life of Jesus may be manifested in our bodies. For we who live are always being given over to death for Jesus' sake, so that the life of Jesus may be manifested in our mortal, mortal f- flesh. So death is at work in us, but life in you. Since we have the same spirit of faith according to what has been written, I believe, believed and so I spoke, we also believe and we also speak, knowing that he who raised the Lord Jesus will, also, will raise us also with Jesus and bring us with you into his presence. For it is all for your sake, so that as grace extends to more and more people, it may increase thanksgiving to the glory of God. So we do not lose heart. Though our outer self is wasting away, our inner self is being renewed day by day. For this light, momentary affliction is preparing for us an eternal weight of glory beyond all comparison. As we look not to the things that are seen, but to the things that are unseen. For the things that are seen are transient, but the things that are unseen are eternal. Thanks for letting me read such a a long passage of of Scripture, but I think it was was important to be able to see all of that to to understand what we're looking at uh, today. So, most of our time will be spent in chapter, chapter 4. But the main thought of today uh, is this. God changes us to reveal the glory of Jesus Christ in and through our lives. God's in this process of changing us so that the, the glory of Jesus Christ could be seen in and through our lives. The author of 2 Corinthians uh, the Apostle Paul, from his conversion till he wrote this letter, Second uh, Thessalonians, had experienced 20 years of a changed life. So from the time that he was uh, converted on the road to Damascus until he writes this letter, about 20 years had gone by. So Paul had experienced uh, a lot of change. <clears throat> Paul had been a Jewish Pharisee who was teaching, old, teaching obedience to the Old Covenant law and persecuting those who were believing in the message of the good news of Jesus Christ. When we get to the time in Paul's life when he's writing to this, the sec, his second letter to the Corinthians, he's using his own life, he's using his own ministry as an example of what a, what a changed life can look like. In chapter 3, uh, Paul was expressing some of the changes that had happened in his own life and in his own ministry. A life and ministry that had changed from one of law uh, to one of grace. A life and ministry that had changed uh, from one that brought death to one that brought life. A life and ministry uh, where the change was temporary uh, to one where the change was permanent. A life and ministry that had changed from one one of condemnation to one of righteousness. A life and ministry that had changed from obedience to the commands of Moses uh, to obedience to the commands of Christ. A life and ministry whose glory would fade uh, to, a, uh, to one whose glory would ever increase. And as you go through chapter 3, you can just see him going back and forth between living life in the, uh, according to the Old Testament law and living according to the spirit, uh, condemnation in the past, Uh, righteousness uh, in his future. Uh, There's this great uh, change that had taken place in Paul's life, and he wanted that change to take place in the lives of the Corinthians and our lives as well. And then finally, we get to verse 18 in chapter 3, and Paul expresses in full detail this change that God was continuing to do. He says, we all, he's talking about uh, himself, his ministry companions, and the Corinthians. He says, we all, beholding the glory of the Lord, are being transformed, changed into the same image from one degree of glory to another. So there's this great change process going on in our lives. Just as a, a dimmer switch increases the brightness of a light bulb to illuminate a room 
God was working in Paul's life. He's working in the Corinthians' life. He's working in our life to increase the brightness of Christ and his image uh, that would shine in our lives. Uh, the word translated transformed in verse 18 is from the Greek word metamorpho. It should sound a little bit familiar. It's where we get the word metamorphosis, which we use uh, to describe uh, the, the change that, goes, that, a, that a caterpillar goes through to turn into a butterfly. It is a significant change. It is a uh, major change that goes on. A complete change of nature, a complete change of identity. This is the work that God is doing in our lives. So the question I want to answer uh, this morning in chapter 4 of 2 Corinthians is this. How, how do we embrace this change? What is, the, what is the work that God is doing in our lives to bring about uh, the change of Christ-likeness in our lives? I want to share uh, three uh, ways this morning from ch uh, chapter 4, three ways that we can embrace the change that God wants to do in our lives. The first change is in chapter 4, verses 4 through 7. Verses 4 through 7. Embracing change is believing we are no more than a clay jar. It's believing that we are no more than a clay jar. Clay jars were common uh, in most households in the ancient world, clay jars were simple containers that stored water uh, or food. They were inexpensive and unimpressive. They were fragile and easily broken. There was nothing important. There was nothing significant about a, a clay jar. And, and Paul thought of his life and his ministry as a clay jar. I think Paul says it best uh, writing to his companion Timothy in 1 Timothy chapter 1, verses 13 through 16, he said, I received mercy because I had acted ignorantly in unbelief. And the grace of our Lord overflowed for me with the faith and the love that are in Christ Jesus. The saying is trustworthy and deserving of full acceptance that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. And Paul says about himself, of whom I am the foremost. But I received mercy for this reason, that in me as the foremost sinner, Jesus Christ might display his perfect patience as an example to those who are to believe in him for eternal life. So Paul considered himself the clay jar of all clay jars. He was the foremost sinner of all others. And his Savior, Jesus Christ, who had extended grace and mercy to him, was the precious treasure that dwelt inside of him. So change began in Paul's life when God shined the light of Jesus Christ, opened his blind eyes on the road to, to Damascus, and he believed in the good news of Jesus Christ. Now Paul says, uses the phrase here in, in verse 4 of chapter 4, he says, "...the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ." When we see the light, when Jesus Christ shines into our lives and we receive him uh, with faith, that's when change begins. God gives us his spirit and the great change process can begin. So the beginning of change that God wants to do in our lives is to, to shine light into our lives through Christ. I think my least favorite moment of any 24-hour day is 6 a.m. I don't like 6 a.m. a whole lot. Most days when I wake up, I, don't, I never set an alarm. I do just kind of wake up on my own. But most days when I wake up for the first time and I look over at the clock, it usually says something between 5.55 and 6.05. <laughs> what time is that? <clears throat> the sun's coming up. And for those of you who get up really early, say, it's, it's not coming up at 6, it's like 5.30, it's earlier than that, but that must be the moment when enough light's coming through the blinds uh, that, I, that it wakes me, wakes me up. Uh, I'm not a morning person, I'm not real crazy about the sun coming up uh, in the morning, so I don't like uh, 6 a.m. very much, but uh, when the light comes up, uh, that's when I wake up. And just as the, the light of the sun wakes us up in the morning, it's the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ that wakes up the sleeping sinner. 
In verse 6, Paul says, God, who said back in Genesis 1, let light shine out of darkness, he has also shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. So just as God spoke light into existence to eliminate the darkness, he brings salvation into our lives by shining uh, the light of the knowledge of Jesus Christ. So change is possible because of God sending his son Jesus Christ, the light of the world, into the darkness of our lives to wake us up and to give us a new life. Change begins in our lives when we see Jesus Christ for who he is, believe in him, and treasure him. We are a clay jar. We are broken people. Our sins separate us from God. We need something in our lives that will help us to change. That person is Jesus Christ, treasuring him who died on the cross to pay the penalty for our sin. So embracing change starts by receiving the treasure of Jesus Christ into our lives, but the, cha- the change that God wants to do in our lives doesn't stop there. There's a, there's a second uh, thing that God is doing. It's in verses 8 through 12 of chapter 4. Embracing change is a, a willingness to die to ourselves. It's a willingness to die to ourselves. In verse 8, Paul says life and ministry, his life and ministry was one of affliction, perplexity, persecution, and being struck down. In verse 10, Paul says he was always carrying in the body the death of Jesus. In verse 11, he says he was always being given over to death for Jesus' sake. Later, in 2 Corinthians 11, he goes, he continues to talk about his life and his ministry throughout the, the book, but in chapter 11, verses 23 through 28, he's talking about Uh, what's going on in his life and what God is using in his life. He says uh, that his life in ministry, he did his life in ministry with far greater labors, far more imprisonments, with countless beatings and often near death. Five times I received it at the hands of the Jews, 40 lashes, less one. Three times I was beaten with rods. Once I was stoned. Three times I was shipwrecked. At a night and day I, I was adrift at sea. On frequent journeys, in danger from rivers, danger from robbers, danger from my own people, danger from Gentiles, danger in the city, danger in the wilderness, danger at sea, danger from false brothers in toil and hardship through many a sleepless night, in hunger and thirst, often without food, in cold and exposure, and apart uh, from other things, there is the daily pressure on me of of my anxiety for all the churches. So for Paul, change uh, or salvation brought struggle. Him putting his faith and trust in Jesus Christ didn't make life easier for Paul. It made life more difficult. Can you imagine enduring the things that Paul endured in his life? It was difficult. It was hard. Why was Paul willing to endure such intense difficulty? Well, in verse 10, he says, So that the life of Jesus may may be manifested in his body. In verse 11, he says, so that the life of Jesus may be manifested in his mortal flesh. Paul wanted other people to see and experience Jesus Christ through his life, especially through his trials, especially through his difficulties, especially through his hardship. He was able to endure such difficulty because he willingly gave himself over to death. He was willing to physically die, but he was willing to die to himself. He was willing to endure and go through anything for his treasured Savior, Jesus Christ. Well, once God has shown the the light of Christ into our lives, he begins this lifelong process of getting the, the darkness out through death. This attitude of dying to ourselves. Continuing on with this, this uh, morning wake-up illustration, <clears throat> most mornings, I said I'm not a morning person, most mornings when the sun wakes me up, I want to reject the sunlight. I want to pull the, the covers over my head, stay in the, the darkness, and just go back to sleep. That's, that's what's going through my mind when I wake up and when the sun uh, comes up. And isn't that how we often respond Uh, to the change that God wants to do uh, in our lives. God shines his light 
of his word into our lives, and we, we reject it, and we continue living uh, the way uh, that we want to live in darkness. Instead of dying to ourselves, instead of putting our selfish desires and our sinful nature uh, to death, we, rather than embracing change, we embrace the darkness and we uh, remain as we are. So change only happens in our lives if we're willing to die to ourselves. It only happens if we're willing to say no to the darkness that's in our lives and walk in the light of Christ. The light is going to shine every day. Jesus is going to show up every day, and we have the opportunity to put the covers over our head and stay in the darkness, or we can wake up and get out of bed, and we can, we can walk in the light of Jesus Christ. That's the, the sanctification process that God wants to take us through, and it's primarily a painful process. It's, it's hard. It requires us to die. It requires us to, to give up what we want and to live our, live our lives for what God would have us live for. So embracing change starts by treasuring Jesus as our Savior, dying to ourselves. And third, uh, verses 16 through 18, embracing change is a daily renewal of our inner self. It's a daily renewal of our inner self. Paul, uh, in, the, in spite of, of, of this, this hardship, in spite of this difficulty, in spite of, of what I read uh, that he shared in, in chapter 11, all the, the hardships that he went through, Paul was optimistic. I'm sure for Paul there were days when the sun came up that it was hard to get out of bed. Uh, but what, is, what does he say in verse 16? He says, we do not lose heart. He had not lost heart. Even though his life and ministry were hard, he was hopeful about each new day. Why was he able to be hopeful? Because he viewed his life in the view of eternal, uh, from an eternal perspective. Verse 17, Paul says the afflictions he was facing were light. He says they were momentary. And they were preparing for him an eternal weight of glory beyond all Comparison. So although his outer self, his physical self, his physical body was aging, uh, becoming less healthy, deteriorating, becoming weaker, enduring all these uh, physical sufferings that he had endured, although his outer self was uh, diminishing, his inner self was being changed. It was being restored. It was being recreated. It was being renewed into something brand new, something that hadn't existed in his life before now existed because of Christ's presence in his life, just like the metamorphosis uh, that a caterpillar goes through to become a butterfly. Paul's life was going through this major change inside, and so he was optimistic. He hadn't lost heart. He understood that the change was something that God was doing in his life day by day by day by day. Every single day, God was changing Paul more and more into the image of his treasured Savior, Jesus Christ. And God's going to continue to shine the light of Christ and eliminate darkness in our lives until we have a renewed heart through affliction. Until we have a renewed heart through affliction. Maybe there'll be a day when I look forward uh, to the sun coming up in the, in the morning, when the light comes through those blinds, and uh, when I put my head on the pillow before I get, go to bed at night, the thing that I'm most looking forward to, the thing that I'm most anticipating is that sun coming up. I'm not there yet. <laughs> my heart hasn't changed towards that sun coming up in the morning, but our heart does need to change about Christ shining into our lives. We need to be ready uh, for his light to shine and for us uh, to get up and be ready uh, to change. Just as we experience darkness every night, we can be sure that we will experience affliction, temptation, and difficulty. But at the same time, just as we, uh, we will also experience uh, the sunrise every morning. God's going to continually shine the light of Christ into our lives day after day after day after day. And every day of life that God gives to us, there's, there will be darkness, there will be light, there's going to be affliction, uh, but there's going to be renewal. And we need to not lose heart. And just remember that there's this great 
change that God is doing in our lives. And I think he primarily does it through difficulty, through hardship, through suffering. And it's in those moments that we need to remember uh, that those sufferings are light. They're momentary. They're preparing for us something that's, that's a far greater weight and a far greater glory than we could ever comprehend. And he's going to continue doing it until the day and the moment that we stand in the presence of our Savior, Jesus Christ. We just need to look forward to it, anticipate it every day. There's going to be darkness, there's going to be affliction, but there's, the sun's going to shine every single day. So we look forward to seeing uh, where the sun is shining in our lives and uh, embracing the opportunity we have every day to be like him. So the question for us this morning is, what is the change that God wants you to embrace? God's shining the, the light of his son, Jesus Christ, into your life. Maybe the, uh, the change that needs to happen in your life today is to put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ. To believe that Jesus died on the cross for your sins, to pay that penalty so that you could be forgiven and have a relationship with him so that the change could begin, so that transformation could begin in your, in your life. And it starts by treasuring Jesus Christ as your Savior and as your Lord. Or maybe there's darkness that needs to be eliminated from your life. Maybe you need to die to yourself. There's some area of your life that you're struggling with that you just need to, to die, to give, give that up and allow the light of Christ to shine and to make that change. Or maybe it's just a renewed heart in the midst of, of a difficulty or, or an affliction. Be looking for where Christ's light is shining in your life and just embrace that opportunity to be more like him, even in the most difficult of moments. And through all of this, he's changing us more and more into the image of his son, Jesus Christ. And as God does this great work of changing us, and here's where we kind of go back to the main, the main thought or the main point of the morning. It's not about us. It's so that the, the glory of Christ would be revealed through, in and through our lives so that Jesus would be seen, so that his light would be uh, seen uh, by other people. And so we allow that light to shine from our lives so that others can see it and experience and they can enjoy the light of Christ as well. As we embrace the change that God is doing in our lives, there's one thing that we can sure will remain the same. I've talked a lot about change this morning, but there's one uh, great truth that we can hold on to in the midst of all the change that we go through and endure in life. Hebrews 13, 8 says, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. If there's one thing that we can, we can know will Never be different. It will always stay the same. It is our Savior, Jesus Christ. So we can look to him and know that he will be with us uh, as he works his change in our lives. And as Christ's perfect, holy, righteous, never-changing light shines into our lives, may we be more and more and more and more and more like him every day. Lord, thank you for shining the light of Jesus Christ into our lives. Now, Lord, as a, a majority of believers in Christ here this morning, we just, we just praise you, we worship you, we thank you for shining that light into our lives. Now, Lord, that work is not done. Lord, help us to embrace the change that you have for us. Lord, would we see the the opportunities that we have every day when the sun comes up, when we see Jesus, when we hear your word, uh, those things that you would change and make different more and more that we would be like Christ so that your glory can be seen. We want you to be uplifted. We want your glory to be seen. Lord, would you do that in and through our lives? In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.